Welcome back to Undulations. So I've talked quite a bit on this channel about modular synthesis with things like the Volca modular, the Castle, the Zero Coast, and even sort of a virtual semi-modular synthesizer like the Microfreak. But I haven't really talked a lot about Eurorack. And I've got a setup, I have one skiff downstairs, upstairs, I've got a pod, quite a few modules. And what I want to do is just sort of talk about you know, the basics of it and the types of sounds that you can get out of it. And I thought that one way to just sort of start things off would be to get a new module. So this is the branches module from Mutable Instruments. And we'll open it up, take a look at what it does and see how it fits into the modules that I've already got. All right, so let's put this in one of the cases. Okay, so I've got the branches module installed in my skiff, and what I'm gonna do is start by taking the gate signal from this little sequencer over here, and I'm gonna run that into the trigger of Akemi's Tyco. So this is a drum module that's based on FM synthesis that can be used for a lot of things other than drums. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take the output from Akemi's Tyco and run that into the input of my Rosie module, which is sort of a mixer and output general, very useful thing. And so now I'm going to hit go on the sequencer. And you can hear a little clicking there. And I'm going to turn these release values up on the Tyco. You can hear that. I'm going to change the FM algorithm. So that's pretty nice like that. Now what I'm going to do is incorporate the branches. And what exactly is branches? It's referred to as a dual Bernoulli gate. And the dual part is just that it's got a top half and a bottom half. So to start with, we're only gonna work with the top half. And Bernoulli, I thought it might have something to do with the fluid flow or something like that, but it's a different Bernoulli. It's a, the mathematician Bernoulli. And so a Bernoulli process is one where that when there's a sequence of events, you can have one outcome or another as you go along the sequence. So uh, we'll see what that means in a uh, synthesis context here. What I'm gonna do is take the output from the sequencer that I was just using and run that into branches, the top part, and then I'm going to come out of the output A and into the trigger. So now when I hit run, it should sound basically the same. But now the difference with branches included in the signal flow is that I can change this knob here, which is a probability. And I'm going to set it in the middle. So you can think of this as a coin toss where the, the gates are still coming in from the sequencer, but if it's output A that receives a gate, you'll get a red light and you'll hear that on the Tyco. But if there's a green LED, that's the output to output B and that's not doing anything right now. And so this is a way to already statistically sort of change our rhythm. So if I wanted to have it very sparse, it would be over here. Or if I just want to have a few beats taken out every now and then. Okay, so now let's try to get this into something that sounds a little bit more fun. I'm going to put 
a cable into the pitch output from the sequencer, and I'm going to run that into the Tyco frequency. So then I can run a melody on the sequencer. Okay, so one thing we can do to make this branches effect more useful is extend the release of the sound. And so that's sort of like adding a tie, changing from say eighth notes to quarter notes. And uh, it gives a pretty nice variation. So I'll let that fly for a sec. Okay, so up to this point, we've used the top half of the branches module to remove notes or beats from a sequence over here, but we can also use the bottom half, and that's made very convenient by the fact that if you don't have anything plugged into the input of the bottom half, the input up here is sort of copied down here. And to use this, I'm gonna take a signal out of A down here, and then Bear in mind that the A's are not copied, the B's are not copied, it's just the input that's copied. So you can have random variation down here that is gonna be different than the random variation up here. And what I wanna do is use that to influence the wave sound or the wave parameter on the Tyco. And I'm gonna push play, just do that by hand so you can hear it. definitely gives it a nice FM characteristic, but what I'm going to do is use a gate signal coming out of A that's only going to be occurring randomly, and I'm going to have that sort of pop this uh, wave parameter a little bit. But to start with, I'm going to turn the second Bernoulli gate setting all the way to B, so we won't really hear any of the wave setting at first. So that basically sounds like it did. Now I'm going to introduce that wave setting. Leave it sort of sparse. Okay, so Let's pick up the speed on this, and I'm gonna turn some of the releases down as I go. I think it gives kind of a nice sort of, uh, I don't know, Mario Brothers type sound. So let's go for it. So the next place to take this is based on the fact that Branches allows you to have two different outs on either of the portions of the module, but it can be sort of things that are in competition. And uh, I don't mean that in a bad way, but where that you trade off, for example, between instruments. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take the signal out of my black wavetable VCO and put that into the other part of the rosy mixer. So kind of hear that as a low tone. But then what I want to do is take that signal and instead of having it go directly into rosy, I want to have it go into this micro VCF filter and I'm going to come out of the low pass filter. And so right now, if I turn up the filter, you can get it like that. But what I want to do is automate that with the branches signal. So 
that's going to be coming out of B and then I'm going to send that into the CV control of the filter and now I'm gonna basically I'll make it to where that we can't hear the drums at first and it's just gonna trigger the black wave table And then I also have the ability to do some additional pitch control on the wavetable module. So that's coming out of the sequencer again and into the volt per octave on the wavetable VCO. And so now when I hit the sequencer, But what I'd like to do, instead of having this uh, second Bernoulli gate sending signals to the Tyco, I'm going to have it come over here to the wavetable, and it's going to give a little bit of variation on that. So uh, we're going to listen. So you can kind of hear that formant type sound. Now I'm going to bring the drums in, alternating. I think I may leave those a little bit like white noise. And so introducing a second instrument shows you more of the versatility of branches and it doesn't have to be just two instruments it can be two of anything I'll show a clip at the end of the video where that instead of using two instruments it's going to be using two envelopes on the same instrument and uh, you can get some really nice effects I just say overall that branches is a interesting way to add a lot of variation to patterns okay but now a last really cool feature about branches is that it doesn't really have much in the way of latency so that I'm able to take a signal from a oscillator so running at audio frequency and send that into branches and you can kind of already see that there's some traffic there and it's basically taking the audio signal and converting that wave into a gate sequence at the same frequency and so if we want to listen to that, uh, let me turn this down. And now I can start to change the probability and it will add noise, sort of break up the wave train. And instead of listening to the gate train directly, I'm going to send that into the input of my filter and have it ping it and then listen to the output. Quite low. And I decided to add some reverb. Thank you. 
So that was a brief look at the branches module from Mutable Instruments. And got to say, found it quite nice. It's got a nice feel to it, and uh, you can do a lot of different things with it. I feel like that I'll probably use it in something like some sort of generative patch down the road in future modular videos. There are some features that I didn't cover, like the latch mode and the toggle mode. Those give a lot of depth to it. And then you can also, of course, control the probabilities by tapping control voltages directly in. So instead of doing it by the knobs, you can do it with other voltages. So it opens up a lot of possibilities. Now, in the next video, I'll be back to talking about bit codes and the Basel Castle. Take a look at some of the patches that come out of genetic algorithms. Thanks a lot for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.